In this tutorial, I want to briefly discuss with you how we can use a one sample t test in order to compare a sample that we've taken from some volunteers, for example. So, this here is our sample, and we measure, uh, let's say, a biomarker or something like that in milligram per decimeter cubed or milligram per liter. Uh, these are our sample data. And we want to know whether the sample that we have taken from these volunteers here is in line with a reference value which we might have obtained for healthy people. So we know the reference value for this biomarker is about 8.8 .8 .8 milligram per cubic decimeter in healthy people. And we want to know whether our sample represents healthy people. And we can do that with a one sample t-test. One sample t-test. Now we will use a t-test whenever we do not know the population standard deviation. So if the population standard deviation for our populations, either the volunteer population or the reference population, if this standard deviation is not known. And in this case, we don't know the standard deviation for the population. So therefore, we need to use the t-distribution. Now, what we can do in Excel is we can try and uh, calculate the p-value for such a distribution. But before we do that, we should uh, quickly calculate the uh, estimated population that we estimate from this sample. And in a previous video, I showed you how we can do that. So we can calculate the estimated mean of the population from which this sample is drawn. We use the built-in function mean and highlight the cells here. We get the population mean 6.067 milligram per cubic decimeter. We can calculate an estimated standard deviation and uh, we use the standard def.s function to estimate the standard deviation of the population. And we get a value of 2.8. And we can also calculate a margin of error with the confidence t. We would usually use a 95% confidence uh, interval or 0 0.05 significance level. We need the standard deviation and the sample size and we get the margin of error. So we know that for the population, for our population from which the sample was taken, we have a mean that is 6.1 plus minus 2.9 milligram per decimeter cubed. And I leave a link to a video that describes in detail how we can do that. Okay, so that is the population mean. And we now ask whether this estimated population mean actually tallies with the reference value. And in order to do that, we will do this one sample t-test. But before we do that, we need to first state our null hypothesis. So here the null hypothesis would be the population mean that we have calculated here, 6.1 plus minus 2.9 milligram per decimeter cubed, minus the reference value is zero. Or in words, we can phrase that as there is no difference between the population mean from which our sample was taken and the reference value. Any observed difference can be fully explained just simply by the sampling error. 
We can also formulate an alternative hypothesis, H1. Uh, here we say the population mean from which the sample was drawn minus the reference value is not equal to zero. Or in words, there is a difference between the population mean from which the sample was drawn and the reference value. And any observed differences can only be explained by the sampling error and an additional factor. The additional factor being here that they are from different populations. So these are our null and alternative hypotheses and in a way they are right, quite boring because they are always the same for a one sample test. Now in the second step we set a significance level. We call this alpha. This is also a type 1 error. Very common we would set this to 5% or 0 0.05 and that is sort of the cutoff point for our p-value. Because in the third step we set up decision rules. We say we are going to calculate a p-value and if this p-value is smaller than the alpha, if this p-value is smaller than 0.05, we will reject the null hypothesis. We will just simply say no, the null hypothesis is not correct and instead we will accept the alternative hypothesis. Namely, that there is sampling error and they come from different uh, populations. However, if the p-value is larger than the alpha, the significance level, if the p-value is larger than 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. This is a little bit like saying we accept the null hypothesis and we say, well, there is no difference. So how can we calculate this p-value? Well, in Excel, unfortunately, there is no easy or straightforward way or just a simple click way to calculate the uh, p-value for such a one sample test. But we can do a little bit of a trick. So we've got a reference value of 8.8 .8, and we also use this reference value again. We put in 8.8. .8, so we've got two data points 8.8 .8 and 8.8 .8. and now we can use the built-in function in Excel which is called t-test which performs a t-test. It will ask for the data from our sample. It will ask for the data from the reference We want to do a two-tailed test, so here we would use the number 2 in the options and we will choose option 3, which means we have two samples, of which we don't know the standard deviation of the underlying populations. So let's put this in. So equals t dot test and it comes up already with the suggestion. So here we take the array of the sample. So this will be our first sample. We then take the observation from the reference. We've got only two. Well we have to have these two. We then do a two-tailed test for a two-tailed distribution. So here we put in two and we take a two sample and we always go for unequal variance, three, and we should get our p-value. So that here is our p-value. I make this a little bit larger. So increase the size a little bit. 
So that is our p-value. And now we go back to our decision rule and say this is the p-value. And very clearly this p-value is larger than 0 0.05 that our alpha that we've set here. And therefore the conclusion is we fail to reject fail to reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis can stay. If uh, p is high, higher than alpha, h naught can stay. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and we actually say that the sample here that we measured, sample represents a mean that could come could come from healthy volunteers. because the population mean that we've calculated 6.1 plus minus 2.9 and the reference value of 8.8 .8 are not at all dissimilar. And if we look at that, what we would see here is that we've got here our population, our estimated population. So that would be 6.1 and here this would be 9, so that would be plus 2.9. And here we would have 4.2, 3.2 actually, 3.2. So we would assume that our the population mean is somewhere between 3.2 and 9 and 8.8 .8 is within this range, so we put it here. That means that a value of 8.8 .8 is a likely value for this population mean. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.